says that she loves me Isn't it lovely when the one who loves me is the one who loves me? Let me ask this question. Her saying this, does it have the same weight as mm, I'm just... I'm, I'm being measured because I, I don't want to say, you know, any anything, you know, negative about Vice President Harris. Right. At the same time, I feel like collectively, while there's a, a lot of people that actually, you know, rock with her, mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, her saying it like, yeah, OK, you, you should be saying these things. Right. Like and then some would say, well, haven't you been saying these things? Um, is it because it's an election season? And I feel like she's been put in a really horrible position as vice president to this president. Um, because a vice president is a very specific thing. It's a, it's Dan Quayle. It's, you know, Gerald Ford falling down. Airplane. It's, it's, you know, vice presidents by nature are not supposed to have any heavy role other than if the, the main guy happens to die or get woman, then you step in. But, and I, and I always thought when Biden, president Biden got elected that he should have done what Bill Clinton did with Hillary and give her more because you know hillary worked on health care and you know because they were grooming her and then he got caught with that lady didn't touch her and then he got mad because hillary was more popular and he sabotaged her we can go down but i I felt like the biden administration should have put kamala harris in a position to be more presidential Mm. and i feel like he put her away for a minute and Mm. now it's like oh i might lose let me send her out that's in a you know should have been the heir apparent and i don't think he put her in a position to be the heir apparent but let's play the clip and maybe i'm wrong This is unnecessary to debate whether enslaved people benefited from slavery. Are you kidding me? Are we supposed to debate that? Let us not be distracted by what they're trying to do, which is to create unnecessary debates to divide our country. Let's not fall in that trap. We will stand united as a country. We know our collective history. It is our shared history. We are all in this together. We know that we rise or fall together as a nation. And we will not allow them to suggest anything other than what we know. The vast majority of us have so much more in common than what separates us. And so let us stand always for what we know is right. Let us fight for what is right. And when we fight, we win. Okay. I don't even know what she's talking about. (laughs) Wait, all the passion, Dr. Carr. Oh, yeah. I mean, the passion mass. Come on. This oh, is, you didn't think that was a good yeah, this come on, myth, Dr. Carr. Making our co- <laughs> we know our collective history. Do we? First, there's no we. And we're all in this together, really. And when we fight, we win. These are campaign slogans. I'm I'm, I'm glad she said something. And we need people to bang on it. And Dave, yeah, I think we probably agree we need it. But let's be very clear. When you look at that standard, like we did Saturday, we're gonna do some more of it tonight. When you look at the benchmark, SS 68.8.8.2, analyze events that involved or affected Africans from the founding of the nation through reconstruction and the subcategory, which says, uh, instruction includes how slaves develop skills, which in some instances could be applied for their personal benefit. That's what they're saying. Benefits are saying, hey, everybody slow down. See, I had no investment in in the project. I'm not involved in the myth-making. If you look at that with a cold eye, two things come out immediately. Number one, this document, which is a curriculum that no teacher uses chapter and verse, is a fight between the members of the committee. And they've been throwing committee members under the bus. The Sanders today said, I didn't have nothing to do with it. They asked the committee, okay, fine. But when you read it closely, this, and we talked about this Saturday, Carl G. Woodson's grandfather was enslaved. And to make money on the side, he learned how to make furniture, this kind of thing. And slavery was bad and he fought his way out. And one time the guy cheated him and he beat the guy up and he ran to the Union Army and came back, they tied it up and whipped him. These are historical examples. When you say in some instances could be applied for their personal benefit, if you know the history, you know the second thing. One, we came here with all the skills, the iron workers and the agriculturalists, the women who grew rice. And we know that. But and also number two, the history of forced labor and enslavement is very complicated. There are moments when African people were able to get Frederick Douglass's wife, Anna, was free. 
She worked in Maryland and subsidized his escape. There are some stories of resistance that do involve Africans figuring out how to get resources. But when you come in with the sledgehammer, yeah, it's a great sound bite. Yeah, we got to bang on this curriculum. But what you're what you're then creating is a situation where people will start listening to this as if they read it and thought about it. This isn't what she's doing, not intellectual war warfare. She's doing politics. And we need both. But fortunately, we're doing the intellectual warfare part. So, you know, she can handle politics. Right. OK. And we need all of it. Right. All of it. We need all of it. Right. Yes. 866-801-8255. But are, don't we have more in common that we have differences? And don't we don't we need crazy? people? Yeah. Period. Right. And don't we need people of all hues to recognize that we are all on this go i was i started off the show talking about how hot it is it's hot as hell in arizona yes like people getting third degree burns falling down on the ground in Absolutely. arizona because Absolutely. the 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 earth <laughs> is saying enough right so Absolutely. and we did that so i was like maybe it won't be aliens i feel like if there's a russian invasion there's gonna be a large swath of americans wanting putin to be to take over yeah i don't i think martians come black folk might be okay with that I feel like the only thing that might bring us together is is maybe, you know, a common like natural disaster where we are all in peril because we are. It wasn't the pandemic. I thought that for sure the pandemic would everybody can catch the covid that didn't even when that didn't happen. I was like, we are doomed when right. y'all fighting over wearing a mask during a pandemic. I don't know if there's any rescue at this point. I'm not sure. I don't I'm not optimistic. No, that's right. They, I mean, the masks are a proxy for something else. Florida stayed open and people died. Not in the initial waves, but when the uh, when the, when the variants came and DeSantis used it to propel itself. I mean, yeah, a common threat to our humanity. I mean, it'd be nice in an Independence Day scenario, but the simple fact of the matter is as you go back to Kiefer Sutherland and they clothed Tyrone. As long as you have a common enemy, what um, Nikhil Singh in his book, Black as a Country, calls the, uh, the anti-citizen. That's us. I mean, you can rally. Um, so when the country music guy says, I want to go back the way it was, what you're saying is you want to go back to when you could tell us what to do. And so in order for there to be, a, can there be a we if all of us get to be who we are? That is what Du Bois's definition of integration was. Integration isn't me becoming like you. Integration is I get to be who I am and we all work together. That has never happened in the United States. And, and simply the fact of the matter is maybe it never will. You know? mm. and, and, and look at all these common workers in UPS, for example. You got hundreds of thousands of people on the verge of strike, all different colors. I didn't realize how many black people worked for UPS, a quarter of their workforce. This is the largest, the second oldest, the best logistics network and one of the largest, the largest private sector unionized employer in the United States. And you got people who just trying to get a, a higher minimum wage, part time benefits, some damn air conditioning in their trucks. That should bring us together. It's bringing the union together, but you got people saying, no, nah, as long as I just want my stuff, I ordered it now, I want it today. What's going to bring us together, Professor Hunter, in a capitalist system where people don't care? Somebody that's going to make them care. Uh, and and, wow. a, and, a, and a, somebody that's going to poke you in the middle of your forehead and say, yeah. wake the F up. Yeah, yeah. You, you, can, you can wait for your stuff another week or two if it means these people get and it's happening and I'm 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 excited. I'm I'm happy to see hmm. because I, I feel like the domino started with the writers, now the actors, now UPS, Amazon, y'all didn't do it in where was it? Alabama, they had an opportunity yeah. and didn't and and look, like you have an opportunity because the power is actually in your hands. And that's all I've been saying. We're not powerless. We're not subject to the billionaires who are sitting there playing, play, playing a marionette game with the rest of us. Like, no, the veil is off. We see the wizard and he <laughs> looks like Bill Gates. Let's okay. go. 8668 or Elon Musk. <laughs> Smiles and says that she loves me. Isn't it lovely when the one who loves thing is the one?